thinking about art seriously? That's a good question. I think when I started really thinking about art seriously was when I was about eight years old and my primary school teacher took me to the National Gallery. Uh, at that time, I hadn't really seen real art and uh, we went to this museum, which I'd never been to before, and I was really excited and stimulated and I just fell in love with everything. And uh, the main artists that I really was drawn to were Dürer, Da Vinci, Da Vinci's cartoon particularly, uh, Van Gogh's Cypresses, and Dega's drawings. And I remember leaving and I just got so excited about it. And there was no school project, but um, I rushed home. And the next day, in those days you didn't get pocket money. You had to take uh, empty bottles back to get any a few pennies. So I didn't have much money, but I managed to go to the local shop which sold a few oil paints and I bought four tubes of paint and uh, a little bottle of linseed oil and two brushes. And I went back to my garden and in our garden we had like a workshop, my father's workshop, and I tried to paint what I just had seen the day before, which was the wheat field with cypresses that Van Gogh had painted uh, that's actually on in the exhibition, permanent exhibition in the National Gallery. And I remember Obviously, up until that time, I'd only used poster paints, and I was using all this thick, kind of, you know, oil, you know, voluptuous kind of oil paint. And of course, it was a new experience, and uh, I had to wrestle with it, but it was like stimulating. And I think that was the first time I really came in contact with real painting and the problem of painting. And uh, I've been in love with that mistress ever since. Would you say painting is subjective or objective? Well, that's a good question. Uh, quite often today, everyone tells me painting is subjective because we live in a world that, in an art world particularly, that anything that's in a museum, whatever you place in a museum now, is art. And everyone's an artist. But it's not in my view. I have the opposite view. Everyone's not an artist. You know, of course... In any society, if you went to some small tribal village, you find uh, untouched by the outside world, untouched by outside cultures, education, uh, modern uh, engineering and model, modern advancement. What you find is one person's a doctor, one person's a teacher, one person's the philosopher, one person's the leader, one person's the politician, one person's the priest, one person's the carpenter, one person's the artist. We are no different. Don't let the distractions of a modern world fool you. For a society to flourish, you need all these various components, these various individuals that collectively come together and create a community and a society. So therefore, I think you're born an artist. Now, whether you have the chance to uh, develop that natural uh, instinct is another matter. Uh, that's fate. But I mean... The greatest artists have a great gift, but also they have the ability uh, to concentrate and also they are driven. So they persevere against the odds. So they keep on persevering, you know, and it, you can talk about Van Gogh, you, you can talk about Soutine, you can talk about Rembrandt, you can go through the whole history of art. Every great artist, when he looked at destruction or failure in front of him in the mirror he didn't give up he just carried on he followed his vision so you have to have it inside you can't be taught that that's something that's inherent within you that can't be swallowed or contrived or or manipulated or invented uh, sorry, you mentioned language and visual uh, genetics. Can you explain what you mean by this? Well, you know, like I mentioned, um, if you have my view, and Sickett said a similar thing and had a similar view to my own, that it's one continual long chain, uh, and each link is forged through the centuries by various artists. 
but they're all part of that same history and same lineage. And like any family, you know, if we take German Expressionism, if you work in that area, then obviously, you know, you're going to be related to Beckman, Kokoska, Corinth, you know, you know, and going back, Goya and even Rembrandt and going back to Bruegel. You know, you're going to, there's this lineage of evolution, visual evolution, that you're part of. Uh, whereas if you're, uh, you know, someone that works from life, that plain air painting, you're probably going to be linked to the Impressionists. And your family, your ancestry is going to be linked to that lineage. You know, or if you're a realist, it's going to be going back to the 1930s with German photorealism. Uh, and then beyond that, you'll probably go back to the Romantics. And beyond that, going further back, more back to the Renaissance. So everything's part of the family, like our normal human fam families. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, your genetics are very strong within you. Your history and genetics are part of you and they're inescapable, but you're still unique and you have a unique voice. And that's the same, I can use that analogy to illustrate what I mean in art, that, you know, nothing's modern, nothing's old fashioned, and nothing's contemporary. It is what it is. It is of its time for good or bad, and like any offspring, just because you're the next generation doesn't mean you're better than the previous one. So don't think that we're necessarily advancing, you know, we're just descendants of our ancestors, for better or worse. How do you begin a picture? How do you choose a subject? How do I begin a picture? I mean, basically, uh, it's kind of a, a mystery, really. It's kind of almost like something that kind of, uh, like an energy that kind of, in a way, uh, begins in the stomach or the gut, and you get this kind of need to express yourself. Uh, and whatever you're stimulated by at that time, or you're focused on, it could be walking in the street and seeing a person that you find interesting. It could be a subject from the history of art that you're interested in. It could be going to a museum and seeing a painting that stimulates you. You know, so the subjects vary. It might be minor tours one week. Uh, it might be portraits the following month. Um, so I generally follow my instincts and whatever I'm excited to, sorry, whatever I'm excited about or drawn to, I just follow my nose and uh, explore. The main thing is to be to work every day and let inspiration uh, not just fall from the sky because that doesn't happen. Inspiration only happens through regular working. You have to work every day and some days you can't find your way outside of the room. In the dark room, the labyrinth of confusion and other days you manage to find a light switch which takes you into the next room which takes you on a new journey so it's a constant you're like an explorer exploring your visions
Figurative work is important to me because we are human. We are figures on the stage, the world stage. Uh, so our daily struggles, psychologically, physically, personally, emotionally, subjectively, are universal. And they've artists have wrestled with these problems since we started visualising our own imagination. So to me, figurative art is the, the only art that actually completely deals with the human condition. Boop, <laughs> boop,